what's up everybody welcome back to another video on the channel today week seven is officially in the books it's been a long season so far but we still got a lot more football left to play but in today's video i kind of want to go through some of my takeaways from week seven just some of the conclusions that i've been coming to after this past week of football now as always if you guys agree with me or disagree with me make sure to let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel but all right let's go ahead and get right into my five things that i learned from week seven number one the eagles are still the team to beat the eagles are a damn good football team we know this right but they kind of started off the season slow and they had their first loss of the year last week against the jets but yeah, they took on a very, very good Miami Dolphins team, and they look good doing it, right? They they were very much in control of that entire game, other than a few Tyree Kill explosive plays. Um, I think they really bottled up that Miami offense pretty well. They had no running game. Jalen Hurts looked great. A.J. Brown looks like the best receiver on planet Earth right now. Dallas Goddard was involved. They were running the ball pretty well. Um, and, you know, nobody can stop the brotherly shove. N nobody could do it. So the Eagles, for my money, are still the team to beat in the NFC. They're probably the betting favorites to go to the Super Bowl again on the NFC. And especially especially with the 49ers losing, um, the Eagles are still a damn good football team. And they're the team to beat right now. Number two, speaking of Super Bowl contenders, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they, they're looking good, man. Uh, if the season ended today, I would put my money on the fact that Lamar Jackson's probably the MVP of the league. He is playing great now. They had a highly anticipated matchup with the Detroit Lions this past week, and they decimated him. I mean, that game was not ever even close. The first whistle was blown, and the Ravens won that game. It was insane. I, I, I haven't seen a team dismantled like that in a long time, especially a team of the Lions caliber. Right? I know they were missing David Montgomery, but they were a lot more than David Montgomery away from winning that game. Um, the Ravens' defense looks really, really good. It looks like it can go to the Super Bowl. And, of course, their offense looks great. The Todd Munkin offense is clicking. The receivers look like the best receivers that Lamar Jackson has ever had. Mark Andrews is still his dominant self. And Lamar Jackson, I want I want to point out something. He's not running as much as, as he normally did, especially in his MVP year. But Lamar Jackson, I think, is a much more confident downfield thrower of the football. He's keeping his eyes down the field. He's finding open receivers. And I think this offense is doing him a lot of favors. He's really, really balling right now. The number three thing we learned from week seven of the NFL is that Seahawks defense is legit, man. Uh, you know, three straight weeks, they have put on dominant performances. You know, on Monday night a few weeks ago, you could say, well, it's the Giants. And yeah, that's kind of how I felt at the time, too. But last week, they went to Cincinnati. They really shut the door on Joe Burrow for more than 40 minutes of that game. And then this week against Arizona, they played really good as well. Um, Devin Witherspoon is legitimately a superstar. That guy is awesome. Uh, the Seahawks continue to have really good pressure numbers and get after the quarterback, which is great. Their run defense is way, way better than it was last year. Thank you, Bobby Wagner. And the Seahawks defense is legit right now. Like They're like a borderline top 10 defense right now, which is awesome. I love to see it. Um, Jamal Adams is healthy. He's playing good. He's a good safety. Y'all are just fucking haters. I don't know what to tell you. Jamal Adams is playing good. Uh, like I said, the corners are playing good. You're not hearing Tariq Woolen's name. It's probably because he's locking up the dudes he's going up against. So um, the Seahawks defense is good, and a lot of young stars are making plays for the Seahawks. Number four, the Chargers are frauds, man. The, the Chargers, they are, they are frauds. I went into the year having the Chargers as like the five or the six seed in the AFC. I thought Justin Herbert could be in the MVP conversation. And I thought the Chargers were, you know, finally going to break the curse of not being able to win a playoff game with Justin Herbert. None of that's going to happen. None of that's going to happen. They're, they have two wins right now, and they just look like they're falling apart. The defense is atrocious, and it's supposed to be really good with all the talent they have on the field and the fact that Brandon Staley is a, I guess, self-imposed defensive specialist i guess we could say um this chargers team they're just completely faltering right now justin herbert is good yes but mike williams is hurt the running game is bad and it's inconsistent and austin eckler's hurt i mean they really don't have a lot going on for them right now they're gonna have to have justin herbert be superman um in order for them to sneak maybe into the playoffs now that the jets really aren't a threat anymore but man this it's kind of ugly now for the last thing that we learned about the nfl this week is that the Buffalo Bills are not one of the AFC title contenders. Um, listen, I don't think that they're fraudulent by any means. I'm not going to overreact to a loss to New England against the greatest coach of all time. But just, you know, over the course of this year, I've just kind of noticed that they are not, they're not a Super Bowl team. They're not, 
and I had some doubts going into the offseason with them. You know, I kind of thought that maybe they could be a little fraudulent and that they weren't up to the standard that a lot of people thought they were. And this year, I've been proven right. They have three bad losses in the first seven weeks. I mean, the Jets is a very winnable game. The Patriots is a very winnable game. And the Jaguars, I mean, you know, the Jaguars hadn't been playing great football up until that point. And the offense goes cold. The defense can't make a stop when it needs to. I understand that Von Miller's coming back, but the injuries on the defensive side of the ball are really hurting them right now. I think Matt Milano was a bigger loss than people understand. And the Bills, I don't think, have a chance to go to Vegas this year for the Super Bowl. So that's the five things that I learned from the NFL this week. Comment what you learned down below. I'm very interested to hear it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.